Hello, my name is John Broadwell, and I'm a medical device development and embedded systems consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. I'm also the creator of the Serial Wombat open source project. Today, we're going to be looking at one of the many pin modes available on the Serial Wombat 18AB chip, which is based on the 28 pin microchip uh, PIC 24FJ 256GA702. And what this pin mode does is use the microchip's charge management timing unit to do capacitive touch along with the A to D converters. You don't really need to know all that. You just need to call my Serial Wombat Arduino library and uh, hook it up to a couple of sensors, which you can create out of many different objects. Let's take a look real quick at the circuit that we're going to be using today. It's quite simple. The Serial Wombat 18AB chip uh, with its basic uh, setup, the two bypass capacitors, the 10 microfarad core capacitor. We've got uh, clock and data lines coming from a Node MCU clone uh, Arduino board. We've got pull-up resistors going to the clock and data line, don't forget those, and the 10K pull-up resistor on the reset line. Uh, on the breadboard, we've got lines that cross from either side, and we're powering with 3.3 volts that's coming off of the node MCU. This circuit is probably the single most easy peripheral circuit you're ever gonna see, because we're using two touch sensors. What I have is a quarter and a penny that are just connected up with alligator clips. Unlike a regular button, you only need one wire to each one, so it really doesn't get any easier than this. We've got them hooked up to pin 17, and pin 16. And so those need to be the analog capable pins, which for the most part are grouped on the left side or top side of the chip. Now let's take a look at the first of the Arduino sketches that we're going to run. And this is one that you'll probably want to run yourself. There's no reason for you to reinvent this wheel. This is a calibration sketch. Essentially, every capacitive touch sensor that you create is going to be a little bit different. Here's a video that you could watch if you like on the theory of capacitive touch sensing. But long story short, uh, we're going to charge up in a metal object and see how much charge we have to put in it to get up to near the top of our range. And if you put another capacitive object, such as your finger, nearby, then the total capacitance increases, which if you dump the same amount of charge into that system, results into a lower voltage than if your finger is far away. Now, that varies a lot depending on what the materials are and how much uh, dielectric, that's the insulator, exists between your finger and the uh, sensor. And this is real cap touch sensing. You'll see some Arduino examples sometimes where they actually have you touch the pin, and that is cap touch. But really what you're doing there is making a direct connection. And it's a very rudimentary form of cap touch. And it's not desirable from the standpoint of you really don't want to be touching pins directly if you can avoid that because if it turns out you've got a static shock on you that can be the end of your electronics so this is the sort of cap touch where you can actually put a plastic panel or a wood panel or whatever and then have a sensor behind it where there's no actual connection to the circuit so let's take a look at the sketch real quick. We include our serial wombat.h as always. We declare our I squared C address and what pin we're going to want to use. Uh, this pin has to be one of the analog capable sensors, which you see are marked here in green. In our case, we're using the I squared C, so the, the two that have the data and clock are not available. Uh, last digital read uh, is a global variable we'll be using. For setup, we're going to start up the I squared C bus with our wire begin. Uh, we're going to start up the serial so that we can dump some information out. Uh, we'll wait a second for these guys to be able to properly initialize. The, we'll do a version check. You guys don't need to worry about that. That's on a second tab. But essentially, it's looking to make sure that the serial Wombat chip is up and running and that uh, things are in proper shape for us to go ahead and run the rest of the uh, of the, the circuit. Uh, then we'll determine the charge time. Essentially, we're going to start with a very small charge. Uh, the charge works kind of like a garden hose. If you picture a garden hose in a bucket, uh, you don't know what size bucket you've got. 
And so you turn the garden hose up for a certain amount of time, then look to see how much water's in the bucket. Uh, and what we want is to fill our bucket about 90% full, which is to say we want our A to D converter to get up to about 60,000 counts. So we're going to iterate through different charge times until we get one that just crosses the 60,000 count threshold out of 65,535. After we do that, then we're going to calibrate a high limit. Essentially, we're going to take a bunch of samples where your finger is far away and look to see, okay, what is the lowest finger-free sample that we get? And we'll use that as a low th as the threshold for no touch. Then we'll have you put your finger on the sensor. We'll go into another loop and we will uh, look for five seconds to determine what's the highest value that we get when your finger is nearby. And I'd recommend when you do that, that you touch it relatively lightly so that you can detect a light touch. At the end, then we'll, we'll do that. We'll set hysteresis points. The way that this pin mode works is it oscillates back and forth. When you touch, it has, the voltage has to drop below the low limit for you to recognize a touch. Then when you release it, it has to go up above the high limit. If it fluctuates in that middle, you don't get a digital transition. You can also, if you want to, just read the raw A to D counts. That would be important if you were doing something more sophisticated, like implementing a slider or trying to tell the difference between two or three fingers or one finger worth of touch. Uh, if you were trying to compensate for water that might be on the, sen the sensor, if you had some system that for some reason the standard calibrations might not work, you could write some higher level protocols on top of that to, uh, to deal with that. But for most people, what we're doing here is going to be probably the way that you want to go. So, and then it will dump out the limit and it will recalibrate the cap touch into a digital output. And then we'll just go into a loop and we'll output a zero or a one. Zero says, I don't sense your finger. One says, I do. So let's execute this. Uh, so let's execute this sketch and watch it go. Okay, here we can see it iterating through the charge. It's doing it on the quarter which is currently connected up to pin 17. It's shooting for 60,000 counts. It's getting close. And 7,500 was the proper charge time. Now it's looking at samples for the high limit. The lowest it found, it looks like was 55,000. Now it's telling me it needs a finger to measure. So I'm gonna put it just on the tape. I'm not gonna cheat and touch the metal. And it found a limit. And it's happy. It feels like those are the proper calibration constants. Now it turned that into a digital input and it's going to go into a mode. I touch it and I get a one, take my finger away, I get a zero, touch it, I get a one, take my finger away, I get a zero. And you probably get the idea, I could do this all day. But instead, let's take a look at another example. The second example that we're going to look at is touch counter. And both of these are available in the Arduino uh, examples under the serial wombat slash 18AB. Uh, this is essentially uh, a similar, except we're gonna be using both a penny and a quarter to do the touch sensing with. And I've previously calibrated these and found the proper counts and proper charge times for those particular sensors with that tape over it and whatnot. So we're going to create two separate uh, touch sensors on pins 16 and 17. And we're going to pretend that we're counting change, which is appropriate because we have a quarter and a penny. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the uh, Serial Wombat debounced input know that there is a class that can run on top of that on the Arduino, which uses the touch sensor time, I'm sorry, the button debouncing uh, hold times in order to implement a variable incrementing or decrementing uh, class, which we call the counter class. And in order, because a touch sensor and a button are theoretically or conceptually very similar, uh, I implemented all of the same interfaces on the capacitive touch uh, 
pin mode that the debounced input has. And so if you want to go back and watch this previous video that I did for the Serial Wombat 4B uh, that talks about that, you could. But essentially, we're going to create two different counters, both of which look at and increment the same variable, which we'll call money, money count. The penny counter is going to increment by one. The quarter counter is going to increment by 25. And essentially, we'll make it increment slow for the first 500 milliseconds. I'm sorry, we'll make it increment slow every 500 milliseconds for the first 2,000 milliseconds, then faster every 250 for the next five seconds. Then after that, we'll make them increment every 10 times a second going forward. So, uh, and what this lets you do is create uh, a pretty sophisticated uh, user interface that has two different speed increments for a variable. It doesn't take much of a leap of imagination to see how you could, you know, use this in a menu system for configurable things. And we'll be looking at that in other pin modes in the future uh, where we, we implement a little user interface with a seven segment LED or things along those lines. So, but the actual loop is very simple. Uh, we just update the counter for each the, for the penny and the quarter and then we check to see if the either of these counters change the money count and if so then we dump it to the screen so pretty straightforward let's upload the sketch and see how it goes so we can see here now the sketch is running and it says touch the or and hold the penny or the quarter if i touch the penny we get an increment of one cent. If I hold the penny, we get an increment that gets progressively faster and adds a penny each time. Similarly, if I push the quarter, it goes up by 25 cents. So you can see, let's shoot for a value, say, of $10.67. I'll hold down the quarter because that's the fastest way to get there, $4.00. Five dollars, eight, nine, ten. Do my math here. Okay, forty-two cents. Ten dollars and fifty-seven cents. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Again, a minimal amount of wires, a minimal amount of code, but something that's a fairly solid user interface. You know, and you can do. Uh, you know, six or seven of these, depending on if you're controlling your serial wombat with I squared C, which are up in the analog range, or with the UART, which is down in the purely digital range, you know, you can you can have quite a few buttons with this. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you're using the serial wombat's cap touch uh pin mode on the serial wombat 18AB, uh leave me a comment down below or if there's something that wasn't clear or if you have recommendations for new functionality or or find something that you think isn't working then by all means leave me a comment uh, if you think everything's great then give me a like and until next time i hope you have fun and keep making stuff the serial wombat firmware is available on github and it's constantly being updated Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features to the Serial Wombat. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485 as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below. Questions sent to John at Broadwell Consulting about Serial Wombat will not be returned.